At approximately 624 on October 13th of the year 1976, during a rather cool and crisp morning, just before the world at large, or at least that of downtown Los Angeles, had its cup of joe, one Benjamin Kellogg Pivovaz was ejected from his mother's very dilated cervix to be indoctrinated into the great hoopla we generally refer to as life. Or, if you're a true Southeast Rastafarian, the big, bad, trip man. <coughs> hey, look at that. Benjamin, or preferably Benny, didn't have the most ideal of upbringings. His father didn't take an interest in his son's endeavors. Lots of babies. And his mother? Well... She was preoccupied with other meaningful pursuits. Now school. No, don't. That was an entirely different matter. It's not as if his peers didn't pay attention to him. intimate of circumstances, Benny proved to be quite the anomaly with the ladies. It was the workforce that best fed his independence and sense of self. Sorry about the mix-up with the Rosenberg case. I just wanted to let you... And so Benny cultivated a somewhat marginal existence. Until one day, while driving home, through the less developed back streets in the middle metropolitan area of town, he discovered Ladies of the Evening. Want some company? I can give you a really good time. Oh, go go that. Hey, Wanna take me for a ride? continued for some time. That is, until Benny found the right. Lady. You want some Kung Pao for your little mouth? Maybe I mean love you long time, baby. Like ten minutes? Like five. If you're lucky with your sucky. Oh, you paid your boy! No way you suck! It's a soul and hug! So things seemed to improve for Benny, and 
better yet. Can't believe you like post-industrial artifacts from the simple, hard-working indigenous peoples of northern Djibouti, too. I tell you, baby, I've been around the world. I, a culture girl. His future was secured in the sharing of common interests. This girl, whose name I won't begin to butcher with my inadequate pronunciation of Asian, Middle Eastern, or Southern African-American names, represented a new hope for Benny. This rhyming foreigner was to be everything that he was missing, but one true thing that he could finally give himself to, a girl that would appreciate what he had to offer. If you can imagine. going well for some time until one day while Benny was at home innocently fingering his well The unforeseen would have to be communicated to Benny in the most delicate of manners. I just don't understand. You're the only one I've ever trusted. The only one I've ever gave myself to. Baby. I used to love you, Mojo, but I just ain't your whole no more. I have me another man who make me feel like my old boyfriend, Fox Fam. But I thought you liked post-industrial artifacts from the simple, hard-working indigenous peoples of northern Djibouti. Baby. I like a butterfly in the rain. I must go before you come. In my face again! Maybe it was the shock of that unexpected moment. Or the 13 glasses of whiskey that followed. Lovely. Or his day at work. Yeah. Fix that, you fucked up buffoon. Or an unforeseen encounter with a past flame at a local coffee shop. Jerk. Or his school days. Shit, I missed his eye. Or his mother. Or his father. Or his neighbor's fear of saxophones. Just leave me alone! Or the construction of a polyfoam-based synthetic bicycle seat. Gentlemen, fuck tassels and squeeze horns. This is the future, baby! Or the demise of the prehistoric era after an unsuspecting comet had its wicked way with mommy Earth, or two single-cell organisms doing the hanky-panky in a liquid bed of primordial ink, or the lengthy emergence of the first land mammals in the depths of the great dark oceans, 
For early man's grasp of female disposition in a mostly patriarchal society, worship based typical objects by the ancient civilizations, or the scientific theories for the way of all known things, or the completion of the Eiffel Tower, or David O. Selzin's burning of Atlanta, or the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, or the bombing of Dresden, or the monsoon season in Japan, or counting neutrinos, or hops, polishing knobs, or the hand that's licking the nose, or the sense of the Hot pearls, spice, mustard, or the earth revolving around the sun, or the alignment of the stars of the sky, radio, the phenomenon of this total explainable! Nevertheless, Benny had finally reached a breaking point in his miserable existence, one that would reflect upon an entire life of being pushed around and pissed on by others, especially that rhyming foreigner. Fucking bitch! What are you doing, baby? You're so crazy! Bitch! Stop! You're making me scared! That didn't rhyme. I know! See how scared I am! Fuck you! Oh, yes. Fuck on me! Don't you do this! Fuck you, bitch! At this point in the story, one might expect the cops, court, jail, and endless days of countless bars of soap being coyly dropped at the county correctional facility. But Benny had made a small miscalculation. He missed the rhyming foreigner and hit the curved part of the steel plate in the headboard of her bed. This produced in the bullet a most grand ricochet effect, the result of which penetrated a C3 vertebral bone, rupturing the cord it might otherwise protect, and thusly securing Benny in a hospital bed specially designed for invalids. Oops. I suppose some guys have all the fun.